hello. Back to Omnivore's Dilemma, and I decided to do a different kind of recording today because I want to also share my screen. So I'm going to do that now, share my screen, and we're going to look at a tab, and then I'll get into what we're working on today. So hopefully you can see this. So today we're going to, again, we're back to Omnivore's Dilemma. And we're going to be looking at part two, the farm. But we're only going to be focused on this section called Frankenseeds. Now, I want to call your attention to something um, that I'm going to add notes to the virtual notebook about. And that is something called nonfiction textual features. And we know what a feature is. So, if, for example, if you're looking at my features, my skin is brown, I have locks, I'm really tall. Like all of those things are features. All of those things are things that you look at and help to describe me. And so nonfiction texts also have features, also have things that identify and help you understand the content. And so we're gonna talk about two of those features today. And one of those features is um, headings. And if you notice, the title is the farm. So that gives us information about what we're going to be talking about specifically in this particular section of not omnivores dilemma. And then you also have headings. One farm, 140 eaters, the far end of the food chain, and our particular heading is frankenseeds. And so nonfiction features give you lots of information. So this is a heading. Okay, so I'm going to put nonfiction feature dash heading and there are more okay this heading so this is going to be about frankenseeds i wonder what frankenseeds are i wonder what i'm going to learn about frankenseeds so a heading is one kind of uh, textual feature and another feature is a picture or image so non-fiction feature image okay and then there's another one down here, and I don't know if I can go, oh yeah, I can go down there. The other nonfiction feature here would be a caption, okay? And the caption is, did I spell that correctly? Yes. The caption is that little paragraph or that little sentence or couple of words that accompany an image or a photo. So let me highlight these um, because we're going to talk more about those. Oh, where's my highlight? Hmm. Okay, so that's kind of, oh, you can't see that. That's kind of in yellow. I can't find my highlight button, but you know that, oh, I know I can do. I can put these in red just to call our attention back to them. So we're looking at three different nonfiction features. And when I see nonfiction features, I always deal with those before I start reading. So here I see frankenseeds. I'm wondering what those are. Are they actually seeds, like seeds that you plant in the ground? What are they used for? How do they relate to the omnivore's dilemma? These are all things that I'm thinking when I see that heading, frankenseeds. Also now this picture, which is really hard. It's a picture, it looks like it's a man. I don't know, those might be corn seeds in some type of machine or holder. And then the caption, which I'm gonna have to make this bigger so I can read the caption. It says, George Naylor, something his truck wish, okay, let me look at the, let me look at the print because I cannot read that. So it says, George, oh, George Naylor loads his truck with corn from his storage bin, which he'll then tow to the grain elevator in town. Now, whenever you see an image or a caption or a heading, those are super important, right? And those are things that you should pay attention to because an author is not gonna just put a random picture in there for no reason. There's going to be information in that picture, in that caption, and in that heading that's gonna help you to understand what you read. So always review images, always take a look, read the captions, and think about the heading and why the author would add that heading and bold it and make it bigger than all the other type, 
all clues to understanding what you read. So our annotation focus for today, as you can see, is the who, the what, and the why. So we're only gonna be dealing with those three W questions as we read, who, what, and why. So let's get started. Frankenseeds with a question mark. Frankenseeds? Great. When farmers first planted hybrid corn, now hybrid, I don't know what that word means. So I would underline circle or highlight that because that's a great vocab. When farmers first planted hybrid corn in the 1930s, their yields doubled or tripled. But if they planted seed from the first crop, yields dropped again. Since the second generation of corn was not identical to the first, the only way to get the higher yields was to buy seed from seed companies. Soon, the only way for a farmer to compete was to buy hybrid seed every year. Even if farmers face hard times, the seed companies continue to make money year after year, selling farmers something they used to grow themselves. They used to grow themselves. So let me go back to that because that's a little complicated. So when farmers first planted hybrid corn in the 30s, their yields doubled or tripled. But if they planted seed from that first crop, yields dropped again. So it sounds to me like if farmers reused seeds, their yields drop. Since the second generation of corn was not identical to the first, the only way to get higher yields was to buy seed from seed companies. Okay, interesting. Now I wonder what that has to do with franken seeds, right? And I'm thinking out loud, and this is the kind of thinking that you need to do in order to increase your understanding and to make connections to the text. When you do this kind of thinking and annotating as you read, there's no question that you cannot answer. Okay, let's continue. Remember, we're annotating for who, what, and why. Okay, and I think a what here, particularly since this title is Frankenseeds, and because we're talking about hybrid corn and we're talking specifically about seeds, I would say that I would underline, let's see, um, higher yields from, I would, I would highlight or underline seed from seed companies, right? And then in my comments, I would say that's a what, okay? So then that, that connects to that. So that's a what, who, what, why? Let's continue. Today, the seed companies have taken things a step further. Genetically modified corn seed or GMO for genetically modified organism promises even higher yields than hybrid seed. GMO corn is not built, okay, that should be built the old fashioned way by crossing corn plants. It is created in a laboratory by adding genes to the corn's DNA. The new genes don't come from corn plants. They might come from a bacteria or some other organism. So with human help, corn can now take genes from other plants and animals. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities for plant and its breeders. Now, this is really interesting. So again, we're back to the seed. And to, so we have hybrid seed, which I'm gonna underline and you can highlight, circle or underline versus, and I'm going to put a little versus here. Whoops, hold up. Okay, I'm going to put versus GMO corn. So we know that GMO corn is genetically modified or made by man. And the hybrid seeds are the seeds that they use once they plant, and then they yield another set of seeds. Those are hybrid seeds. So those are natural the GMO, the GMO seeds are genetically modified. So again, I'm gonna highlight this and that's more, more what, okay? Now, remember you're putting this in your what, you're writing your gist, you might write in the margin, hmm, which is better? You might draw a little corn stalk here, 
that's up to you. Remember, annotation can be fun. Okay, let's read that last sentence again. So with human help, corn can now take genes from other plants and animals. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Okay, so I would say, who's the who here? We know the what is seeds, right? And we looked at two types of seeds, hybrid seeds and GMO corn. But who is this article talking about? Think about that for a moment. Who is this article talking about? Okay, let's continue. These new GMO seeds bonanza for the seed companies. No one can own the species called corn. It is part of the natural world, the common property of all humanity. But with GMO, a company can own a patent on a living organism. When Monsanto or some other corporation invents a new type of corn, it belongs to them and they can charge farmers for the right to grow it. But many farmers like George Naylor refuse to grow GMO crops. They believe that GMOs are a reckless experiment with nature, with the natural order of things. So they believe that GMOs are a reckless experiment with the natural order of things. So I gave you the what, and now at the bottom of your document, you should write who and tell me who are we talking about? Remember, look at your picture, look at your caption, look at your title. We're talking about the what, which I already gave you. Hybrid seeds versus GMO or genetically modified seeds. And then the why. Okay, why hybrid seeds? Why GMO seeds, right? Why would farmers buy GMO seeds? So that's what you're gonna do, the who, the what, and the why. And then you're not gonna do this part because we're gonna talk about this, but your central idea statement. So think about that. What do you think is the central idea of this piece? Now your notes, you should have all the notes that I have. I'm gonna give you a definition of central idea. Central idea is what the author wants you to think, feel, or know about the text. Okay, central idea is what the author wants you to think, feel, or know about the text. So we're gonna talk about central idea. You don't have to worry about a central idea statement unless you're just feeling, you know, unless you're just feeling yourself and you wanna do it, you wanna attempt a central idea statement, that would be great. But again, your annotation is who, what, which you're going to write here at the bottom and why. Okay. And your document should be marked up. I only did one for you, but this is very short, just a few paragraphs, like four paragraphs. Okay. So as a review, think about your text features, your nonfiction text features. We have a heading, we have an image and we have a caption. Think about those. And then make sure if you need to stop the video to annotate whatever you circle, underline, or highlight, there should be a gist, right? And I use the comment box to do my gist in your margin. Okay? Thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay? And come back to the meet and say, all right, that's it for today. That was quick. So make sure again, you have your annotations. I should see that document marked up. Anytime you highlight, underline or circle something, you should also have a gist that corresponds with that. 
A gist should be no more than a couple of words, no more than six, or your gist can be a picture that you draw. Okay? So I'm going to stop the recording. Okay? Thank you. Bye.